Welcome to the City League Sports Show here in the studio. Yes, you heard me correctly. In the studio, we have some former City League football players. We got a Lyndon McKinley Panther in the house, Doug Rippey. And we can't hard, I mean, it's hard to speak football, right, and not have a Brookhaven Bearcat in the house. So we got Rodney Stewart. Both of these guys are City League stars, but they also became Colorado Buffalo stars. <laughs> so we're going to get into some fun stuff. I'm your host, Dr. Vince Clarino. Let's start to chop it up. We're going to turn to you first over here, Doug. Doug, say hello to everybody in Central Ohio, man. Say hello, what's up. Hello, hello, everybody. How you doing? I'm Doug and Shrippy. Um, I grew up in Columbus, originally from Philadelphia. Went to Linden, went to Colorado, had a great time. And then had He's a giving his whole spill. I'm cutting him off. He's giving his whole spill. We're not even at that point yet. We're just at hellos right now. He gave me the Douglas. Rip. Love, we, got love, a smile. we got a smile. We just want you. To, so, so we'll turn to you. I, I'm, I'll let you say your own nickname also, man, if you want to throw it out there. But we'll turn to you, Rodney, and then let you say hello to everybody. Hello, this is Rodney Stewart, uh, nicknamed Speedy. There we go. Grew up in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> yeah, uh, Brookhaven Bearcat in the Colorado Buffalo. Yes, indeed. Hey, hey uh, I think Speedy probably, for all of us that have maybe had a, a chance to watch you play, seeing what you've done, um, Speedy is probably not even uh, the, the term that even works best because you used to be out there getting it on the football field. Um so, so, so being a Columbus guy, share a little bit, uh, Stu, a little bit about just um, like you know your youth football. Get, get, give some of them some love. Where, where was you out there running around at doing pee wee and all that? Who gets, who, who get, who, who gets some love for that? Uh, Coach Randy. Uh, Randy I gotta, Clarkson. Got to, got to shout out the uh, Mifflin Sharks. Yeah. You know, Sharks. Man. I, so many of y'all dudes played for the Mifflin Sharks, man. Yeah. Yeah. But one thing I. Um, I will say about growing up is we was big college fans. We wasn't like big NFL fans. Mm. So like uh, the person that, that raised me or I would go to in the neighborhood with all my friends and he would keep us out the streets. That's like my, that's my uncle Marvin. And uh, he was a big Michigan fan. Okay. So we wasn't really into NFL or like that. Our, our dream was to just go to college and, he would always just say, just get your degree. Yeah. Because he knew yeah. the NFL didn't last that long. No doubt. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so people, we, we got a fun show here today because um, both of these young men's journey kind of like, you know, it, it, it starts at different places. We're going to settle in and have some good City League football fun. We're going to have some Colorado football fun. And we're going to, like, peel back some layers about the lives of these two guys who I, I, I am proud to say – um, really just was getting it for us, man, our, our, our stars in a lot of ways. And so you heard you heard Douglas say, <laughs> Douglas Rippy, right? He threw that out there when he said, right, instead of instead of yeah. Doug. And, and, I, and I, for, for so long, man, just was calling you Rip, man, because mm -hmm. I think so many people call you Rip. And so many people call you Speedy or Stu, right? So if, mm -hmm. if you all don't mind, we'll kind of stay in that space. I think listeners will enjoy it. But um, Rippy, like you said, man, so you're Philly born, mm -hmm. you're Columbus raised, and then you spend some time in Dayton. So mm -hmm. I guess these Dayton folks get a little bit of love here today. On oh, the yeah, of course. Way, right? Of course. Travel um, and helped, You know what I mean? They, 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 helped, they helped finish the package for us on, on what we started. But um, talk a little bit about, man, like, you, you know, when you get to Columbus and then, and then you know, some, some of your journey in, in that path as you got here and then being introduced to Central Ohio. Oh, man. Um, we moved here when I was five. So it was a complete culture shock. Um, growing up in a big city, then moving here, and not really, you had to drive everywhere. So mm, you know, okay. what I'm saying then, growing up here, it was just like in Philly, we was all hoopers. Like you just see basketball everywhere, not really too much football. Yeah, but um, Philly that's, got the Big Five oh, universities, yeah. man. So that, so that, it's a lot of basketball. Oh, yeah, a lot of Villanova. <laughs> LaSalle, St. Joe's, Temple. Temple. Temple was always my dream school because of Dick Shady. Okay, yeah. yeah I always yeah. wanted to go there to yeah. hope. Um, when I was in school, we played against Temple, man. Temple was in the Atlantic 10 when I was playing. Yep, so, Jamie was one of the coaches, man. Oh, and, man. Uh, you know, he always wanted to do them early, bright, early morning <laughs> practices. Man. He tried to he tried to get us to schedule him a game one time. I know we're talking football, mm -hmm. but he tried to get us to schedule them dudes in the game at like 6 a.m. or something oh, like that yeah. when I was playing. Oh, man, that's terrible. But um, just hoping, and then I got a chance to play a little league, Midtown Panthers, uh, the Patriots. But I only played like a short few years, and then after that I just focused on hope. 
then um, I got introduced to Coach King because uh, I got in a little trouble in middle school. And from there, it pretty much took off. Like when I got, where, where, where'd you do middle school at? Uh, Medina. I was at Sherwood. Uh, okay, uh, East Side for a little minute. Yep, Hamilton Township, and then yeah. um, Medina. That was okay. the last stop. And then I went to St. Stephen's, and then Coach King, of course, was our AAU coach, and then yeah. somehow I ended up at Linden. Nice, okay. So, um, and I, I must say, Linden, <laughs> I didn't play football. I remember my first game I went to was Linden versus Brookhaven. I will never forget that. That was in 2000, that was my freshman year. My sophomore year, that was your sophomore year. William Baker was all state. He went to go return the punt. I see Speedy as a gun and run down. <laughs> Baker went to wave that ball. Oh man, Speedy still lit him up. I said, This is the reason why I'm not out here doing this because you see DJs and Alex is running around just. Yeah. I'm like, Yeah, that ain't for me. Yeah. <laughs> that ain't for me. Yeah. And, the, and, the, and, the, and so, so, so you out here blasting guys that's on Linden's team. And, and, and shout out to Coach Marvin King, man. Marv is, <laughs> uh, is still doing it. Yes, sir. Still, yes, sir. Still helping raise young people out here, man. We got a lot of love for him here in the community and here in Columbus City Schools. But. So so you so you so you a little bit late to the game of football mm -hmm. and then and then you kind of find your way and, and we're gonna bounce back and forth here. So so Stu, you are on the Brookhaven uh state team when you're a freshman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 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 what memories do you have of that just as a <laughs> as a young guy, man, and being out there as a freshman and watching some of them older guys maybe pave that way for you all? I feel like it was more exciting to the the older guys, like to win the state and yeah. all that. For us, we was just sitting there like, "Wow!" Like right. I can't even believe I'm out here with them. Certainly, uh, yeah. yeah. So it was just really exciting. It was like watching a national state championship game. Like, wow, okay. I mean, yeah, yeah, college NCAA yeah. championship game or something. Yeah. And just being there, being on the team, knowing you can't really help, but. You know, you can just be there to witness it and be on the team. Certainly. Say you was on the team. So, well, you know what? I, I think I think helping it, it comes in many shapes and, and, and forms, man. And you mm -hmm. don't have to necessarily be out there on the court or the floor or the field contributing yeah. because there's other things that you do throughout throughout a season as a teammate, man, to be a part of what makes those special moments take place. True. So you um you you're you're on the you're on the you're on the state team as a freshman mm -hmm. and 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 who was y'all's coach at the time uh coach Blake coach Blake okay and uh coach Thornton oh okay coach Thornton yes indeed so okay yeah. and, and coach Thornton is, is still get out mm -hmm. there getting it man you know he's currently coaching over at Mifflin yeah. um, we had him on the show a couple of weeks ago but now I, I read somewhere that maybe it was your sophomore your junior year you got hurt uh, my junior year. Your junior year, you yeah. got hurt. So, 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 what goes through sixteen, seventeen year old guys' mind, man? As you're a kid and you, and then you're hurt. So, you, so you didn't play that season. Nah, I didn't. Okay. And I, I was, I had just came back from winning the city title and track. And all of that my sophomore year, so I was ready to go. You was a bad yeah. dude then, wasn't you? Yeah. You was a bad dude, okay. <laughs> yeah. You was winning cities as a sophomore? Yeah, track. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I just I came back off of that, and then um, I got hurt. And then, you know, you just walking through school, everybody like, this dude ain't nobody. Like, because they don't, they don't know they don't yet. Know, yeah. yeah, they don't know yet. So I had to deal with that. I can't wait till I get back so I <laughs> no can doubt. show everybody who I am. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it kind of made me feel like I was, um, you know, a, a lame. I don't want to it was another term for lame, like just unrecognized. Yeah. Yeah, through a so, lot so of So part people. of your identity was gone for a little while. Right. Who who so who 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 was in your space helping you through that? Man, that's probably tough for a kid. Nobody. Oh wow. I you was just having a challenge through that on your own. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Yeah. That, I mean so so that in itself then builds a level of resiliency. Um because nobody knew what I could do. I didn't have no high school big games and none of yeah. that. You know, I was supposed to showcase all of that my junior year right. as a starter, and right. I, it was taken away from me. So people didn't people didn't think I was even good. Well, so 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 did you know though? I knew. You knew. Yeah, I knew. I knew, yeah. and I stayed in the weight room, and you know, you I was, still in the weight room a little bit now. A little no? bit. A little Are you bit. okay? Y'all yeah. dudes look like y'all work out every day, man. Are y'all going to play a football game today? Or do, I, do we got to suit up later on? Y'all dudes look like y'all going to play a football game later on today, man. I feel, I feel inferior for, for all the 
audio listeners, <laughs> I think I'm in shape. I thought I was taking care of myself, and then these two do. Okay, well, I appreciate you saying you that because I, I walk in, I'm like, I feel like I'm the one that's, that don't belong in this room. Y'all How dudes look good? like y'all about to go suit up here. Okay, so but you knew. You saying you knew in your yeah. heart. What you could do is is is, is that kind of where your space was at? Yeah, that's that's where my space is, and I just had to uh, believe in myself long enough to to keep myself uh, hungry enough to come back and still be the person I I, I knew I could be. Wow, man, that, that that's a lot to be kind of shouldering that on mm -hmm. your own, man. I, I I would hope that maybe somebody there at Brookhaven was kind of in your ear, was helping you along the way. But so so, did you do any sports your junior year? None. Hey man, so, so, so here, 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 so, 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 so here's why I'm a little bit amazed. And listeners, y'all are gonna, y'all are gonna understand this in a moment when we get into Speedy's Colorado stuff. For for a guy that didn't play your junior year. And then to go on and do what you mm -hmm. did at Colorado, which I like, I knew you was a bad dude. And then I started reading the numbers and I was like, you a bad, bad dude. <laughs> and then to hear that you sit here today and say your junior year, you was kind of off the radar. Said, then I'm going to go three bads and you was a bad, bad, bad dude. That wasn't like, even my worst point. Oh, uh, wow. My worst point was tearing my meniscus and our my senior game in the playoffs, our last yeah, game. School. I tore my meniscus and played through the rest of the game. Oh, wow. So I'm going on visits to all these schools, and they looking at this big brace on my knee, and yeah. then they're turning me down. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, like, who, who who was believing in you, man? Was there anybody else believing in you besides you, man? Like that? This was Darian right? Hagen came to Colorado. <laughs> he's seen the film, and he's like, I want him. Yeah. You know? And yeah. It was on from there. Okay. Yeah, he so, was the so, only one. So, 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 so let's make that, let's connect those dots, Rippy. I'm going to come to you. Right. Um, Rippy, your journey's a little bit different. Yeah. You 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 said you didn't start off really playing football. No. I um, and, and I think people who meet you for for listeners. So we got two components here. We got a live show. We, we we got a video part of the show. We got radio. People can't see you. Um, I, I when I met you at mm -hmm. Linden, when I was there, I think you was already a football guy. I think you was already. Yeah, locked I was in already. Playing. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. You know, for people who don't know you, you you're a big guy. Like you're, you're you know, you're you, you like people call you a like in, in in society we would call a guy like you a stud, you know, <laughs> six three, two hundred pound guy in shape. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You 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 you're, you're a big guy. Um, I would have never guessed you didn't play football. To yeah. be honest, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like for me. And so, um, share a little bit about your your at Linden, and the, and then your and then your family makes a transition. Yeah. So it was really Coach McKinley. So. With the help of Coach King and Coach McKinley, because Coach McKinley kept trying to get me to play football since my freshman year because I had good grades. I was a 4.0 student. Yeah. And what motivated me for that was Coach King and Coach uh, Point Dexter taking us to Smokey mm. Bones. Because, okay. you know, when you a kid growing up in Britain L and you just outside, you're not trying to get in trouble. You said, man, I'm trying to yeah. stay straight. No doubt. So, um, Smokey Bones is a good trick oh, for me, what? Coach King. If you out there, take me to Smokey Bones. Well, hey, man, listen, I can try to get <laughs> yeah. that 4.0 every quarter. You know what I mean? I'll take, that, I'll take that deal right now, Coach King. You know how to get in touch with me. If you can tell me which, which one we meeting at, I'm over there. But um, as far as in the football journey, I will never forget this conversation I had with Coach Jones. Um, he was asking me, what do you want to go to school at? And I told him, we want to go to Temper, so let's so play basketball. Yeah, yeah. He was like, man, be honest with you, 6'3", small forward, that ain't. <laughs> that ain't happening. So huh? I said, man, I start thinking. So then I, Coach McKinley, he kept bugging me. Like, so I would stand him up to come to workouts and stuff. So it's just one day it just clicked. I said, man, I really want to give it a try. So this is when AJ came out. Okay. And, um, and AJ's your first cousin. Yep. We had yep. AJ on the show too. Yep. Yeah. So uh, I would never forget. We was in pass. They tried to get me to play offense. Man, I tried to run a rock, got blasted. I said, yeah, I'll take everything off. I said, yeah, this ain't for me. He said, da, 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 just, just go to line, just go to defense, such and such. So I said, all right. So we ain't hitting drills. AJ blasting people. Okay. They was like, man, don't tell me AJ our hard is hitting, play on our team. And we had some pretty good players on our team. No doubt, yeah. But it's just like we had a bunch of high heads. So we was just like, man, so I'm mad. I'm like, man, you got me messed up. So I would never forget. I hit Ben Weaver. Okay. Ben Weaver, you look at Ben Weaver. Ben Weaver about 5'11", about 205". 
corn like fed like yeah, down south, bro. Like but Ben, but ben but, was packed and but, stacked oh, in there. Yeah. Ben tried to run me over. I cracked him. Boom! Everybody's like, oh snap. So then that's when I was like, man, I can do this. Like yeah. So it just kind of took off from there. But um, yeah. my junior year, man, it just just blossomed. And thank God I ain't had to play this dude because right. he probably would have right. went off. But um, I think right. I really came into my own my junior year. Then I got hurt, but what really helped me put me on the map was going to the uh, being invited to the All American Combine um, down in San Antonio, okay. the U.S. Army All American Combine. So, being invited to that the last minute, and then happened to get the funds for it. St. Stevens and them did a lot as far as in oh, funding wow. to go. There's the first first. St. Stevens been helping you know, and the kids for a oh, long man, time. Oh man, that's I love Shout them, man. Saint I was, Stevens, that's man. that's one place that I always go to when I come home. Like yeah. even when I was in school and stuff, I always stopped there. Because of everything, if they didn't invest in all this money into what I had a dream of, a vision of, and Certainly. the people that I had around me, this never would have even happened. So right. just going out there, the next thing you know, that takes off, come ranked in the country and all this other stuff. So, yeah. you know, when I came back home, mm -hmm. they was just talking about it all over the school. So now it's like you're this treasure. Mm -hmm. and then, now, I ain't going to lie, it was a lot of pressure. Right. But at the same time, there was nobody out there working with me and Coach McKinley when it's yeah. 6 o'clock in the morning or it's just 100 degrees outside in the summer. There's right. no water or nothing like that. So I started to, like, take on it. But it was just, like, over time, the transition, when you started playing to get going against other guys, and you see what you're going to be going up against in college. And yeah. you see it in the city. Like, man, I had 100-something tackles. And I'm on a bad, I'm not on a bad team, but we're on a team. That yeah, no, you can say that. I mean, if a team, if a team ain't yeah, we was, and, and, and playing, we was bad. I feel like it was a lot of misplacements with people, but we were yeah. bad. We was 0 and 10, and we got 100 something tackles. And then you're going to be going. With, I was committed to Nebraska at the time when I was out there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you're going to play in the Big 12. I'm looking at these cats, these six, seven, such and such. So I'm like, so I'm like, man, I got to figure something out. So then I'm like, okay. You start looking around. My mom was just like, man, I think you should stay, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, then when all the shootings and stuff started yeah, happening, one of my teammates in the community, yeah. had got shot during basketball season. My mom was like, nope, we're out of there. Okay. You know? And I'm just like, all right, I respect it. Like, I can't fight my mom against this because at the end of the day, you know, she was pretty upset that I committed to Nebraska without telling her. Mm, okay. So I had no choice but to. She should have been upset oh, about yeah, that. Yeah, she found out. That's some <laughs> parents, you allowed to be upset about that. Hey, we, hey, we talk parents and love and everything on here. Moms and dads, you allowed to be upset if your if your child makes a choice like that. Yeah, she found out yeah. at work, so she was pretty upset. Mm. So then, try what came up. You know, I was boys with Roundtree and all of them. Yeah. You know, we always kept close relationship. But I was turning 18 at the time, so my mom was like, we go sign the lease. Yeah. You 18, so, so, so I was just like, cool. Like, so made that transition. And you finished uh, that trot, Wood. Oh, yeah, man. And what I, I must say this. I learned so much in football at Trot Wood just because of Coach Douglas and the people that he had on staff. Yeah. Breaking it down. But I must say that the freedom that I had in the city league, I would have loved to give back because <laughs> uh, it just allowed you to really work on the, uh, like, getting the job. I worked on the things that I needed to work on before I got to school. But if yeah. I would have stayed in the city, I know I would have been sitting for a while because it took a while for me to really grasp a couple yeah. of things when I got to school. Certainly. So 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 they helped touch up your skills and hone mm -hmm. your craft here and get you solid. Yep. And 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 so we'll 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 pause there because so still you finally get out there your senior year mm -hmm. and you're playing. Um did did you know you were gonna get a chance? Like like the chances that you got, did you know you were gonna be the starting running back and all those things? Or or or, or where was your where was your mind at? I mean, I was just starting running back my junior year before I got hurt. Oh, okay. like going into all the camps and stuff. And I think pretty, I, I had a good feel I was going to come back and start again because a lot of the younger kids look up to me. And we we wasn't in a lottery school where it's a lot of good names could just come in the next year and you have a lot of competition. Right. Yeah. And with that being said, we was in. They moved us to Division Two. I mean, Division One. After we won the state championship, mm. that team that we had, my senior year, we would have won the state championship again. Yeah. If we was in Division Two. Right. I feel you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But so, but but I mean, like, okay, so coming into it though, then you knew. So you knew you probably had a good chance of being the starter. Yeah. Who, who were some of the other guys on that Brookhaven team that year, your senior year, that kind of stand out in your mind? Uh, Demetrius Johnson, my fullback. Okay. Uh, he, he was another kid that grew up with me. 
Uh, Aquante Braswell, rest in peace. Yeah, Braswell, yeah. Yeah, he was a quarterback. Yeah. Um, Man, the whole team, man. Okay. I remember all well, no, and, and, I, and I'm just, I'm just curious, man. Just cause, because one of the things we like to do is we like to give love on here, man. So, so yeah. we give shout outs, we give love, but not. So, <clears> let me, <throat> so let me share this, right? So, like your senior year, you had some big games. Like you had games of like five and, and four, and I think you had a game of like. Did you have a game where you had like seven touchdowns or something crazy like that? I have. Seven touchdowns in one half. Yeah, and they took me out, and uh, they didn't want me to break none of the old dudes' records, so they took me out. <laughs> Whose records did they not want you to break? Mohawks. Mohawks. But okay, you know. Ain't that, hey, Mo, we had Mohawks on the show, man. We were Mo, just Mo, Mo, about get, this. Mo gets love on the show, we were man. We just that, talking that, about beautiful. this. So, so you was out here just rolling in. I mean, you. Had, I mean, it was some, some teams that just couldn't tackle me. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. It was just couldn't like keep that. up with you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they should have taken. They should have had you out before the halftime, man. If you score seven <laughs> touchdowns in one half, man, get this guy off the field. Um, so, so you explode in your senior year. Yeah. You're, you're having obviously a statistical, just blow up type of season because anybody that's scoring five, four touchdowns a game and stuff like that is having an amazing type of of season. Mm. Um, now, now then, so so Doug, you already locked in at Colorado, mm-hmm. and you're kind of out here figuring out what's next. Is that what's going on? So so then, yeah. so then, how how do we end up with the oh. two of you dudes out in in Boulder, Colorado, right now? Was that your first time ever going out that way too? Yeah. Okay. So 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 how do we who 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 who's taking the mic here on this one? How do we end up in in and, and for and for those listeners that don't really ahead, know, yes. Boulder is the spot where the, where they got a new head coach who's been all over TV this past. Shout out Prime uh, Town. Season. Shout out Prime yes, man. Shout out Prime. Right. Shout we got prime, the love going man. here. So so how do you dudes two two Columbus kids, uh, Linden neighborhood, uh, right Cleveland Avenue. Uh, up and down. How how do you dudes end up in Boulder, Boulder, Colorado? So I remember Coach Callahan got fired from uh, um, Nebraska. I got the phone call. They told me not to come to the visit uh, to the SC game. So I'm like, okay, cool. So then I decommitted. Okay. I opened up my recruitment. So Colorado, they was in the heavy because I'm thinking either I was going to go there down south to Texas A&M or I'm going to Pitt because that was the closest thing to okay. home. Pitt gets love from yeah. me. That's why I was in school in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Area. Okay. Yep. So like, I wasn't at Pitt. I wasn't that good. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> so when it came to Colorado, I went on my visit. I mean, they rolled the red carpet out um, just because of all the guys we had. So... Coach Hager told me, like, we need to take a running back. I need one bad. I said, well, we got a couple in Columbus. You know what I'm saying? I said, I gave them two names. I gave them Pete and Speedy. I said, me being honest with you, Speedy, is going to yeah. be your best bet. You know what I'm saying? So Who was the other name? Pete. Oh, Isaiah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But Pete, he was, I think he was waiting on O State to come. Um, and Pete was on the show. We had Pete yeah. on the show before. Yeah. Okay. So shout out to Pete, though. Yeah. That's my guy. Um, but I told Hagen straight up, I'm like, man, we got to get him. Hagen is a running back coach? He's a running back coach. He recruited me. Okay. Uh, shout out to Hagen. That's my guy. Yeah. He got San Diego State now. Okay. But um, The Aztecs. Yeah. So yeah. I was just like, man, this is I already committed, but I need I need somebody to come out here with me. I'm yeah. coming out here. My bad. I'm no, coming no, out no. here hundreds of miles away from home. No doubt. Just basically selling it to him because at the end of the day, in this in this part, I had some type of power. You get what I'm saying? And when they watch this film, and talking about Speedy's film, yeah, I just sent them Speedy's film. I said I ain't gonna say nothing else. Sent them Speedy's film. He hit me back like, "Can you send me Speedy? Yeah, what's yeah. his number? That such and such." Need to talk to him. But right. from there, I, I ain't. You ain't have to do anything. I ain't after have that. to do anything because. Else. Well, and let me say this, and I and I, and I don't mean to dive mm-hmm. in. But I, I can only imagine when I looked at your numbers, your film probably spoke for itself. Because anybody doing what you were doing, um, who was breaking off, you know, 30 and 40 and 50 yard touchdowns, play after play after play, four or five, six touchdowns a game. Um, if I if I saw that guy, just like when I was looking at it on paper, I'm like, these numbers are ridiculous, right? And, and, I, and I knew you were good because I was in, I, you know, I've been in the school system 26 years, man. So I knew you were good. But, um, 
when you're not right there having a front row seat, I don't think you really know. You know what I mean? So, like, I would hear about you and hear the numbers and see those things, but I didn't know you was, like, doing it really like that. When I saw the numbers on paper, yeah. I said, these numbers are insane. Man, it's great. Right? So, so, so you, send him, you send him the film. I sent him the film, and he told me they was going to offer Speedy. So I kept yeah. calling Speedy. I said, Speedy, be ready, bro. Be ready. He about to call you. Yeah. I thought, oh, but in all honesty, man— when you turn on his film, they <laughs> he really literally like, man, every school passed up on him. Yeah. So that from there just told me, like, you get what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people slept on him because from a guy that came back from an injury like that, his junior year, ACL, right. I had to go through it myself. Yeah. But for him to come back from an ACL and have them that? type of numbers, right. man, he was all over it, man. Yeah. And then next thing you know, Speedy... He, before Speedy went on his visit, he said, bro, I'm about to put some socks in my shoes. I said, bro, you ain't got to do all that. <laughs> <laughs> just go out there, man. They don't care about your height, man. You just play, so. Was that was that, was that something conscious in your mind back then? Did you think that maybe your height might have had played a role in it, in some of those things? Yeah. Really? Okay. I mean, that's yeah. okay. That's you. you that's yeah, okay. You're allowed to be 17, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Say, because let me, let me share with you. I think there's a lot of guys, and, you know, like football has taught us um, – you know, if you if, if you can pack the punch that, that obviously you was packing, it didn't make any the football don't it doesn't make any difference. You know mm. what I mean? Um, no, I, I just think I I, th I think what well, that helps make you human, man. Because mm -hmm. like if you if if somebody was to go right now and look you up online and read your numbers, mm -hmm. you're kind of not human because the numbers are so crazy. Crazy, right? The, the numbers don't make sense, and so um. Our listeners like to hear that you're a human being, man. You're a regular guy. You're a kid. You was you you was worried about your height. That's okay to be worried about that at 17. It, mm. Trust me, we could do a whole show about all the stuff I was worried about at 17. You know what I mean? right. and, and, and people be like, wow. So you 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 get the call and then, and then what happens, right? So you so you so 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 what what sells you on this is the opportunity I'm looking for? Oh, man, it was the only big school I had. Okay. So as soon as he called me, he was like, you need you to come out here. I was like, I'm just telling you right now, I'm committing. There you go. <laughs> he was like, you got to do the facility first. <laughs> I was like, I don't even need to come out there. I, was, I just want to yeah. commit. Yeah. But well, they well, what me did out. you think about that? Had you really paid any attention to even where Colorado was at when you said you was committing? Like, was you really ready for to make that life journey? Like, I'm just going to hop and go all the way out west and keep it moving? I mean, it was my chance to get on TV and... <laughs> Showcase my talent to against bigger or big schools. It was my chance to get recognized to the world. So okay. I was all for it. I didn't care. Like it could have been any of them schools that that got a big name. Yeah. At that point. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I mean, but still though, as as a young, like I know some young people that were searching for the same thing that you were searching for per se um, at that time, and that's normal. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that they were necessarily ready. To make mm -hmm. that type of leap to go to the other side of the country, you know what I mean? Right. Um, so here, so 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 we're kind of getting into some country. I told y'all how yeah, it goes by go, fast. Go by right? fast, don't but, it? but so 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 let let's jump to Colorado. You guys get to Colorado together. Your um, same year income mm -hmm. freshmen right together. Yeah. Y'all y'all are rooming together. Y'all mm -hmm. y'all y'all are Ohio boys, Columbus kids. Out, out in Colorado. Share real quickly before we get into some of the numbers. Um, sh share a good memory, both of you. Whoever wants to go first, sh share a nice Colorado memory. Anything. It could be a game. It could be a, it could be your favorite eating space. Um, g give all the, give all us Columbus listeners a little touch of Boulder. You got this one. Oh man! No, I want to hear from both of you. I want you both to share one of your own ah. stories, man. Where was y'all's favorite place to go eat? Anything that was going think, on, man? I think the favorite place to go eat. Was mm, what that boy was. What is it called? The the buff. Nah, you talking about the dark horse? That's what you talking about. Where the boy restaurant was. dark yeah, horse the out dark there. Horse. Yeah, but, the but, but give us a good memory. What what was going on? What, what, like when you look back on it, man. What's something that stands out for you? Man, the best memory that I could think of was the West Virginia game our, our freshman year mm. when Speedy went off because we was man. When I tell you they rushed the field. Speedy's, <laughs> Speedy's <laughs> helmet got stolen. So Speedy's like, where my helmet at? Where was the game at? At home or at, at West home. V? At home. This is when they had Pat White. Uh, man, they was loaded. Okay. This, they was loaded. I think Steve State was still there. Was he still there? Or was it uh, No Divine was there? No Divine. Man, so it was, a, it, was a, it was a packed out game. But that's the game that he really went off. We won. 
And as a freshman, true freshman? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice, okay. Yeah. And literally everybody rushed the field, but like when I tell you, like you could barely move, they had to get security down there. Speedy nice. upset that his helmet is stolen. Because, you know, when you have a big game like so that. So somebody in Boulder, Colorado oh, has, a, has a Speedy helmet right now. Got your helmet <laughs> sitting on that shelf in there. Yeah. They they, they going to they listen to this show and they're going to smile when they look up at it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but it's, Pretty it, much. It's, a, it's a lot of memories, man. It's a lot of places to see. Think on the hill. That's a lot of places. Like a lot of celebrities are places. I mean, celebrities, celebrities that people go. Yeah, you know, eat President Obama been there. Okay, um, but man, there's so many things, man. But I think is like, it beautiful out there? What is it nice? Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Okay, it's, most, it's probably the most beautiful place in the world, man. And especially like when you get to wake up and see the mountains. Nice. And then uh, their cold and our cold is two different things. Their cold, I would take any other day over our cold because of the humidity here. Yeah, it's cold, yeah. man. Okay. What about you, Stu? What you got, man? You got a memory that jumps out at you from from your times in Colorado? Is is it just so many you can't even put them all together? Yeah, my my memories is just more private. Like, <laughs> like times we had where it was me and him, maybe some lady friends or. Okay, well y'all hanging out, but but I mean like yeah. um. So here, man, I, I just having fun. I want to share. Yeah. Then you know what I mean. Um. Some of your records, man, because you 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 have you you're either first or second on a lot of the records from 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 the running back tailback position, but you hold records like as the most all-purpose yards, mm-hmm. um, the most receiving uh, receptions as a running back career. I think you had like 95, 93, 92, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you you had you had an amazing game against Arizona. If I'm reading it correctly, you like rushed for two touchdowns. You caught like five passes, and you threw a touchdown. <laughs> oh, you, you, yeah. They had you throwing. You was throwing the ball too, <laughs> man. So, so you rushing for touchdowns, and you throwing touchdowns, and everything, yeah. man, out there. Do, do, can you remember that game? Can you look back and can you can you kind of see it and feel it? Yeah, I, I remember that game perfectly. It was homecoming. Okay. And I just kept telling myself, y'all not about to come in here and mess my homecoming. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> they, uh, okay. So. Yeah, I, I, I had that thought in my head the whole game, man. We ended up winning. It was a y'all won big. Yeah, it yeah. was a good game. I remember that game. So Arizona came in and got and got wrecked in Colorado, all because you just said we y'all ain't coming in here and ruining homecoming. I mean, that's what was going through my head that whole game. Man, that is beautiful, beautiful yeah. stuff. Hey, when I read that, I just said to myself, like, wow, man. Like, a dude rushed for, rushed for a couple of touchdowns, threw mm. a touchdown. Mm. Like, if you're watching that game at home on television, you're saying to yourself, like, this dude is getting it. Man, I like, remember seeing it thrown that live. I'm like, bro, he really man. threw that, bro. Like, this is crazy. I'm looking at the ball, like... I had one against uh, Texas a and <laughs> you, you you had another throwing touchdown, passing yeah, touchdown. I remember a few of them. Yeah, yeah. So so that, so so you was getting so and then, um, and and, 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 and I want to bounce back real quick just to share this. In high school, because I just came across the number again. Um, in high school as a senior, you had thirty three touchdowns. Shit, that's crazy. So that means you was averaging three, four touchdowns a okay. game. So it's only ten games. I just wanted to let everybody kind of resonate on that and hear that, man. Um, so 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 let's wrap it up this way, man. Colorado Prime is out there. Dion is the coach, and 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 we know we know two different Dion's mm-hmm. as just our stages in life. Yeah. And what I mean is, you know, um, I never really knew Prime. Mm-hmm. I knew Dion, and he was a bad dude. You know mm-hmm. what I mean. Mm-hmm. And and then you see as he kind of transcends, um, as as alumni, and you guys get to speak firsthand on. It. I, I I I put my hands up on this piece. Um, do you like the direction where you see it going as a program for 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 what coaches out there doing? I I, I like putting y'all he, on the spot, right? I like what he's doing only because um, he got to change the program by any means necessary. Okay. And and for and, and his job is on the line too. And his 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 um his his what's it called person his personality. his personality everything yeah, is on the yeah, line he's got for his him. Reputation, he's got reputation. A lot on the line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I I like what he's doing. Um, I still think he probably one of the best coaches I ever been there, uh-huh. and and they just gotta give him my opportunity uh, to come in there and make some changes because the biggest. 
part was the recruiting. Yeah. And okay. They got all these skilled players, but forgot about the line. Yeah, forgot, about, <laughs> forgot about them other boys. You need but them big boys. I don't That's even know if, if that could have been possible to rebuild a team on recruiting a line because if you recruit a line your first year, they're going to be young. Yeah. So you just got to give him a chance. Yeah. Seeing, it, seeing it firsthand myself, I, I, was, I was impressed <clears> because – as coaches, you want a coach that's gonna be hard on you and that's honest. Yeah. And um, I feel like, man, we, we kind of went through the same thing when culture changes happen, you know, when the coach come in there. But, you know, a lot of them guys, they just wasn't cut for it. I think that yeah. first season that if, man, yeah. I, I think if, if he was there when we was playing, we would have been, I would have still been there just because yeah. I went through it. I already experienced that, yeah. that coach's uh, week and how that's going to be. So Certainly. everything that he's doing is, is, is right. Like for him. And I think as a, I'm, I, I appreciate everything that he's doing, especially as an African American coach, because yeah. he he's, they're allowing him to be himself no matter what. And nice. to see a coach to be himself and to be honest with like and, and transparent with recruits, families, and stuff like that. Certainly, it makes you want to go there and play for him because you know you ain't gonna get sugar coated or anything like that. And he just want guys that's gonna come in and work. Like I really feel like the the, the way that the program is transitioning to is gonna be something that we're going to never forget. So. I, I love it. Yes. So so they're telling me we got to wrap it up here. Mm -hmm. I, I want to share for all of our listeners, if you're having um, a Thanksgiving turkey bowl next year and you're, and you're having a neighborhood football game, do not invite these two dudes. They're going to run the show on you. Don't, you do not want these two dudes playing football with you as an adult right now because I want all of you out there to still be able to eat your turkey dinner. These two dudes either need to coach or sit on the sidelines because these two dudes look like they just got done playing a football game in shape. Y'all dudes look good. Hey, man, y'all have been appreciate a blast to have on the show. Appreciate it. Uh, Appreciate it. The, the city league, obviously, man, has love for you all. Mm. Um, if you want to just read some statistical ridiculous numbers, go look up Rodney Stewart, man. This guy's numbers don't make a lot of sense on paper. No. Um, I, I, I'm happy to have you all here, man, on the show today. Columbus City Schools is proud of you guys, man. Um, y'all have been a blast for us today. They're telling me I got to wrap it up. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you all. Say, say say goodbye to everybody for us, man, in Central Ohio here. Then I'll do our outro. Hey, Merry Christmas, everybody. Hope everybody have a good Christmas. We out. Yeah, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and Happy New Year's. Uh, you got you got a birthday coming up, too. Yeah, January 3rd. January 3rd, yeah. Stu got a birthday coming up. You just had a birthday last month, November. Yeah. So we got guys that are celebrating here. We're celebrating here. Uh, much respect to you all today. Be sure to catch all our future episodes on Radio WCBE. 90.5 FM. Catch us on Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to your uh, platforms on podcasts. And then follow the show, everybody, on Instagram at City League Sports 614. I'm your host, Dr. Vince Clarino. These two dudes are some of the baddest that ever done it. This is City League Sports.